Hi everybody, Henry Arslinian here. And I know many of you have been asking for the my, my rules of life or the advice that I give to a lot of my students. Again, I know many of you follow me on LinkedIn where you watch my weekly show, The Crypto Capsules or FinTech Capsules or my weekly newsletter on the future of money. Uh, or many of you, I think, watch my educational videos on my YouTube page. And this is a question I get a lot of from listeners saying, what are some of the advice that you give to young people today in your professor capacity, in your professional capacity? And really, what, I have these rules that I call the 10 S. Basically, it's 10 things that I do every day. I've been doing it for many years, and I do it every day. And, every, uh, and, and they become kind of my life principles. And you can find the whole list of them, my whole speech on this, on my YouTube page on a recent speech that I gave to the Beta Gamma Sigma uh, 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 award ceremony. But I'm, today what I'm gonna do in the next couple of minutes is share some of them with you. And hopefully this could be insightful uh, to you as it was to, to me. And hopefully empower you with some of these like, you know, uh, uh, pieces of advice. And then you can make your own decision if you believe that could be useful for you in your personal life. Hope you're ready. Here we go, let's start with the S's. The first one that I use a lot is what I call seize the opportunity. Uh, this is really the seize the opportunity is really what I call the no pain, no gain formula. I really believe we are going through a game changing time right now when it comes to the future of finance, the future of money, and the coronavirus kind of reshuffled everything around. And this will provide a lot of people will, will, will lose out of this, but many will actually benefit from this. And this, if you're a student or somebody young, you're looking at this, this is potentially an opportunity. What I tell to everybody is really this is a time you need to work even extra hard. Uh, to this day, you know, despite all the years and everything that I've done, I, I really believe that it's an extra 10% effort that you do when you're working on a weekend and late evening that gives you the 20 to 30% return. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I tell us to all my students, I really disagree. And I believe that if anybody tells you to focus on work-life balance, that is the one of the most dishonest pieces of advice anybody can give to anybody who's under, under the age of 40. The reality is this is the time when you're young, not to focus on work-life balance, but rather try to get as many skills as you can. It's never been easier to get some of these online classes, get some certificates, learn new skills, become more agile. Great, if, if you're working in banking, you were not, you didn't have any skills on digital assets, for example, this is the time to do it. If you're working in other, other consumer businesses, and this is a time to me take some classes and learnings in other areas that could be very beneficial to you. And for example, also what I often believe, this is a good time to be able to provide uh, and and, and uh, like be able to actually build your own content. It's let, I mean, for example, you know, people see the success that I have. I have half a million followers on LinkedIn, for example. They see my 60 second video. Nobody knows that, that, that say my 60 second video takes me between four to six hours every week. My newsletter that you see every Sunday takes me between 10 to 12 hours every week. But it's that extra effort that allowed me to come up and build this half a million audience and basically ha have my own distribution channels, my own kind of TV show if I want to. It's an extra effort that you do that gives you there. It's never been um, as important as it is right now. And this is one of the big things I think for people to seize the opportunity on this perspective. Another piece of advice I often give people is to really sit on the edge of your seat. What I call, to, I, tell, I tell my students is to be a paranoid optimist. Think like an immigrant. You know, I give always my personal story. It's been five generations that my family is born in different countries. You know, my family, we are, I'm, I'm Armenian background. They were born in what is now current day Turkey. Uh, during the genocide in 1915 by Turkey, they lost everything. They had to leave everything behind. They went to uh, Syria. They had to start their life from scratch. They became very successful. There's actually even a street in Aleppo today called Arslanian Street. But again, they lost everything. They had to move to Lebanon. They became very successful. But then the war started lost everything, moved to Canada. They had to start again from scratch. And then, you know, and, and now I'm, I'm born in, in, uh, in Hong Kong. And then I had to move to Hong Kong and my kids are born in Hong Kong. So it's been five generations were born in five different countries. Where my kids' kids will be born, I have no idea. But this always says that you always need to sit on the edge of your seat. The world is changing continuously and you need to be able to pivot. You need to be able to be a paranoid optimist. And not only work hard, but be always sit on the edge of your seat and be aware of the changes going on. Every class that I teach at the university, at the end of the course, I put a chair in the middle of the class and I sit physically on the edge of it. And I often tell my students, if there's one thing you need to remember from my class and from me is always, always sit on the edge of your seat. The day you become comfortable, that that's the day you're gone. And maybe a third piece of advice on, again, the third S is setting goals. Very, very important. Uh, what I do personally every month, at the beginning of the year, I set goals for the year. But also every month, I have a one-hour slot in my calendar that I sit down by myself and I reflect over my goals that I am and where I am versus those goals. 
And it's very, very important to put those goals and hold, hold yourself accountable. Whether those are from anything from staying healthy to actually for, for professional goals, you need to make sure that you are, you are, uh, there's accountability in what you're doing and you're setting these goals and milestones you want to achieve. You should look at your personal life the way you look at a project management or a business idea that you have. Very, very important from that perspective. Uh, and I, or else if you don't have goals, you're turning around in circles. You're not focused. You're not disciplined enough. And I think that's why setting goals uh, is very, very important. So another S from setting goals. Maybe and I'll finish up with two other S. And again, for those of you interested, you can watch the full one on, on, on YouTube. But the other one is being selective. You know, uh, I'm very, very selective with time. One thing that you realize, obviously, when you're young, you spend a lot of time partying, having fun. It's great and you should do it. But also, as you become more successful, you'll see that everybody tries to reach out to you. Every day, I get four to five people reach out to me and say, hey, Henry, let's catch up. Let me pick up, pick, pick, pick your brains. Let me, let's, let's catch up before a drink. These are people who have not, have not reached out to me in years. Suddenly, they want to reach out to me. And I think that's one thing you have to be very selective, especially as you grow older in life, with actually uh, who you're spending time with. Your time is precious. Uh, for example, I try to spend as much time as I can with family, you know, because they, they will always be there. But also, that's not the case often with a lot of the business acquaintances. Uh, often, what I tell people is the day that you're not successful, you're not able to provide the value, they're probably going to forget you. So just be aware of that as you decide how you're spending your time. I have a very harsh rule. My rule of how I spend my personal time is if tomorrow morning I'm, I'm accused in court of a certain whatever, Will that person be sitting behind me, supporting me, or they will just try to avoid me? That is my test. The bar is very high. But that's when you start, when you start making this big distinction, that's when you realize uh, and you start becoming more selective who you spend your time with and you start focusing on people who will be with you in good times and bad times. And maybe I'll finish it up with my, another S, which is staying humble. Stay humble. Very, very important. You know, in life, I find there's a big luck element. So you're very lucky. Luck plays a big role. You may work very hard. You may be successful, but you may, you may work equally hard and you will not be successful. You know, um, in many cases, uh, uh, you know, you may you may marry somebody who's rich. You may you may uh, you may do something that it actually will be will be, will be very lucky. Maybe you work in an industry where there's a lot of money. You may work in an industry or company that goes bankrupt. You don't know. There's a you need to stay humble. There's a very big luck element. One of them is actually where you're born. I find today one of the biggest inequalities in the world is where you're born. Where you're born determines your passport in many regards that determines how you can travel, with companies you can join, where you can go and study, which is absolutely unacceptable. This is why I tell a lot of young people to always make sure you're, you're reaching your full potential. And actually, this is why staying humble, you never forget there's a big luck element in life, you know. And, and second of that, I think what relates to that as well is in life, sometimes you'll be up, sometimes you'll be down. Make sure that you're, you're always staying humble because, you know, uh, this is something that you'll see over and over in your career. Uh, you know, being cocky or being too arrogant about what you've achieved will backfire against you because I guarantee at one point you will be down as well. And that makes that makes a big difference. So I'll stop it here. But again, so these are five of my 10 uh, S. If anybody's interested, you can find them all on my YouTube page. Thank you very much, everybody. It was Henry Arslanian here. It was a, thank you for letting me uh, share some of my passion and some of the values I believe in with you all. Thank you very much, everybody. And see you guys soon.